Today we're going to be taking a look at the Compute Blade, a rack mountable PoE carrier board for Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. These are designed to allow you to stack up to 20 blades, each carrying a CM4 module, into one U of 19 inch rack space. So you're able to create a low profile cluster with 80 ARM cores, up to 160 gigs of RAM, and up to 160 terabytes of NVMe storage. The Compute Blade has been designed by Ivan from Uptime Labs, who began working on the concept in 2020 and has now launched the blade through a Kickstarter campaign, which is due to end a little before mid-April. Since the original version, Ivan has been through 8 iterations, taking in feedback from the community and adapting the design to suit. While a 20-node cluster is probably overkill for most people in a home environment, a 4-node cluster in his 3D printable enclosure with two 40mm fans on the back is perfect for a home lab. Taking a look at the board from end to end, at the front we've got one of two addressable RGB LEDs, which are user programmable. Alongside that is a Gigabit Ethernet port, which supports PoE, or power over Ethernet, at up to 30 watts. We've got a programmable button, and a second RGB LED, and then three other status LEDs, for SSD, power and activity. Alongside them is a UART port, and then a selector with hardware switchable Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and EEPROM write protection. We've then got a full-size HDMI port, with the CM4 module area and sockets alongside it. Underneath the CM4 module is a TPM2 security chip that allows you to secure boot your Pi. This is strategically covered by the CM4 module for added security. Next to the CM4 module area is the PoE converter, which steps the PoE voltage down to 5.1 volts. Above that is a microSD card slot, and then a USB-A port, and next to those is an M.2 M key slot, which supports NVMe SSDs up to 22110. Below that is an expansion port for some optional add-ons, like a real-time clock module, or a Zimbit hardware security module that Ivan has been working on. Then we've got a USB-C port and a boot button, which can be used to flash the bootloader on the CM4 module. And finally there's a fan port on the back. The fan port is designed to be used with one of these fan modules that the blade will slide into. To get the blade ready to boot up, we need to install a Raspberry Pi CM4 module and a boot drive. I'm using a CM4 Lite module, meaning that it doesn't have onboard EMMC storage, and this one also doesn't have onboard Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. This is perfect for the blade since we're going to be booting it from an NVMe drive in any case, and we're going to be using the Ethernet port on the front. For the boot drive, I'm using a 1TB NVMe drive, which I've preloaded with Raspberry Pi OS Lite. I've pre-configured the operating system to enable SSH, and I've added myself as a user. You can also boot from a microSD card plugged into the slot on the blade, if you don't want to use the NVMe drive, or if you want to use the NVMe drive as a storage drive. I prefer the reliability of using it as a boot drive. We can then install this custom red heatsink over the CM4 module, which has cooling pads for the CPU and RAM chips. Before I power up the blade, I'm going to make up an enclosure to hold it, along with a 40mm fan at the back, similar to Ivan's 3D printable design for four blades, but this one will be for only one or two blades, and it'll be made out of clear laser cut acrylic. One of the primary drivers behind the blade's design is that Ivan wanted to make them easy to swap out or replace if there's an issue with one. You can simply turn off the power to the device and then slide it out of the chassis without affecting the surrounding blades or having to remove the whole rack. I'm using the same Noctua fan that the Uptime Labs fan module uses, but I'm just going to mount this directly onto the back of the enclosure and I'll plug it into 5 volts and ground, so it'll be running at full speed all the time. The blade does have two of the Pi's GPIO pins available on the fan connector, so you can implement PWM control if you'd like to. That way your blade or cluster of blades will run a lot quieter. With that done, let's boot up the blade and try running some tests on it. If you're using an older CM4 module like I am, then it probably has an old bootloader version on it that doesn't support booting from an NVMe drive. 
So you'll need to update the bootloader, else your power will just get stuck saying that there's no SD card or network boot location available. CM4 modules shipped out after July 2021 should have the new bootloader installed, but you can see this one's bootloader version is from February 2021. Fortunately, this is quite easy to do right on the blade. You just need to boot it up with this button next to the USB port pressed, and then connect it to another computer using a USB-C cable. I used another Raspberry Pi and then followed a few command prompts to reflash the bootloader. After that, the Pi should boot up from the NVMe drive and will then be accessible on your network. I'm using a second Pi to SSH into the blade to do some testing. If we use the command lsblk, we can see our connected NVMe drive. Next, let's install hdpalm and run a drive speed test. We can run the test by entering this command with the drive name that showed up when we ran lsblk. I'm going to run this test three times as it might change a little each time we run the test. So we get a cached sequential read speed of a little over 1000 megabytes per second and a sequential read speed of a little over 375 megabytes per second. This is much lower than what the drive is capable of, but it isn't a limitation of the blade. It's actually of the Pi CM4 module, which only has a PCI Express Gen 2 by one bus available. Next, let's try run some thermal tests. I'll do two tests on the Pi, both using a utility called CPU Burn. The first will be in the enclosure with the fan running, and then with the blade out of the enclosure and without the fan, so just passively cooled by the large heatsink. Let's try the test with the fan first. After running the test for a little over 20 minutes, the CPU temperature stabilized around 37 degrees, which is quite low for all four cores being maxed out. Looking at the heatsink through the thermal camera, we can see that it is heating up, but it's also not much over 32 degrees. Now let's take the blade out of the enclosure and run the test again. After 20 minutes running outside the case with only passive cooling, the CPU temperature is stabilized around 42 degrees, which is also really good. So you'll be able to get away without a fan if your blade isn't running in a confined space, but you'll most likely need a fan if you're going to rack mount it as intended. Power consumption when idle is around 4 watts, and with all four cores maxed out is around 7 watts, which is really power efficient. Even with a 20 node cluster, with all 80 cores maxed out, you'd be using less than 150 watts. There are also some other features of the blade which I haven't tried out yet. You can turn off the status LEDs if you aren't a fan of flashing lights by entering some commands in the terminal. The two addressable LEDs are connected to GPIO pin 18 on the Pi, so you can use your own script to get them to indicate specific metrics or errors. Similarly, the button on the front of the blade is connected to GPIO pin 20, so you can program that to do whatever you'd like as well, like initiate a safe shutdown. Let me know what you think of the Compute Blade in the comment section below, and if there's anything else you'd like to see me try on it. Also check out their Kickstarter page if you're interested in getting one. Ivan has already blown past his first funding milestone. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.